Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, seven years after a Bloomington boy was killed in a hit and run, his mother holds out hope for a break in the case. Plus, Matagorda County officials are asking for help locating a felony fugitive. And Victoria's Field of Honor is celebrating military heroes with flags. Well, it's an unusual situation that we are looking at absolutely gorgeous weather while Florida is going to get slammed by Helene, and that's tonight. Somewhere between 8 and 10 o'clock, it's going to be moving onshore. Very close to the coastal areas, they're already getting the surge beginning to come up. Uh, it's going to be a long night for everybody there. Hopefully, they've, they've taken caution. Now, as you can see right here in the storm center, there's the coast, and it's going all the way in floor, into Georgia as well. I'll have more on that coming up in a moment. And UHV men's women's soccer have both their home conference opener versus LSU Shreveport. That's coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Shauna Curry. Four more threat reports were investigated at STEM Middle School today. The Victoria County Sheriff's Office tells us the threats were spread out over the day. They were made over social media and verbally. No arrests were made. The threats were not considered credible. New details tonight in the arrest of a Victoria West High School student accused of making a terroristic threat. Victoria County Sheriff deputies arrested 17 year old Brennan Gray on September 12th after he allegedly threatened to quote shoot up the school. According to the arrest report, Gray warned classmates not to attend school the following day, insisting he was serious and witnesses claimed that he implied he had a weapon by opening up his backpack in class. Deputies couldn't find him on campus. They later located him at his residence. In the arrest report, Gray told deputies that he was joking and trying to impress his friends. Joking or not, he was charged with making a terroristic threat and booked into the Victoria County Jail. He was released later that day on bond. While this incident involved a student, local law enforcement officials say social media posts by parents have contributed to recent investigations on several campuses, including those at STEM Middle School today. The Victoria County Sheriff and the Victoria County District Attorney say adults have posted unverified rumors about local school threats on a variety of social media sites. They are stressing the importance of parents not sharing information about a perceived threat to social media. Not only does the misinformation spread quickly, causing unnecessary panic, parents can be subject to the same penalties for making a false alarm or report, which is a felony. Victoria Police arrested a 38-year-old man on an exploitation charge. Matthew Johnson of Victoria is charged with exploitation of a child, elderly, or disabled person. He is in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of $50,000 bond. A fugitive from justice is captured in Victoria. 19-year-old Demiron Brown of Atlanta is in the Victoria County Jail on three out-of-state fugitive from justice charges. He is being held with no bond. And Matagorda County officials are asking for help to locate a woman wanted on a felony charge. Veronica Zapata is wanted for a repeal of her probation on a second degree felony. If you have any information, contact the Matagorda County Sheriff's Office at 979-245-5526 or the Bay City Police Department at 979-245-8500. A three-vehicle crash leaves a vehicle overturned. It happened around 2 this afternoon on North Laurent and Commercial Street. Police say two vehicles were stopped for a train crossing when the driver of a red vehicle tried to drive around them. The red vehicle hit the back of one vehicle, which then hit the third vehicle. The red vehicle flipped over twice, coming to rest on the hood. That driver was taken to the hospital with minor injuries and was ticketed by police for a failure to control speed. Tomorrow marks seven years since a little boy was hit by a car and left for dead as he walked to school in Bloomington. Kevin Garza's mother is still hoping for a break in the case. 25 News Now reporter Trenton Whiting talked with her about how she's keeping her son's memory alive. The legacy of Kevin Garza, an 11 year old killed in a hit and run seven years ago today, is kept alive by his mother Darlene through a thrift store formerly known as Crossroads Closet. After a brief period of being closed, it's been renamed Kevin's Closet in his honor. As I closed down um, before my son passed away, and um, he kept pushing me and pushing me, when are you going to reopen Crossroads Closet? After he passed away is when, um, you know, his, what he had kept telling me stayed in my head. And I said, you know what, I, it's, 
it's time. The store stands for each of the values Kevin had in life. Items for sale are donations and sold at low prices or donated to charities. Even from a young age, Kevin desired to help people and even wanted to become a police officer. His fingerprint is all over the store today. He had his notebook where he had made his plans and uh, he wanted to end hunger. You know, he wanted to open up a restaurant that served breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week free. While Kevin's dreams were abruptly halted, Bloomington ISD helped another dream come true by letting Darlene stand in and receive his diploma at what would have been his high school graduation this past May. The gesture was a surprise, one that was pushed by students and faculty. It did mean a lot to me, it did, that they didn't leave him out, that they thought about him on a very, very important day. Kevin's memory is cherished by those who knew him, and his loss will impact those who loved him forever. It still hurts. It still hurts to this day. Over the years, local authorities have followed up on several leads, but the driver who killed Kevin Garza still has not been found. If you have any information that could help investigators, call the Victoria County Sheriff's Office at 361-575-0651. Texas sent help to Florida ahead of a Category 4 hurricane at landfall sometime tonight. New video and photos shared by Hurricane Hunters on X shows their aircraft soaring inside of Hurricane Helene Thursday morning. Governor Greg Abbott sent Texas A&M Task Force 1 to Florida ahead of the storm's arrival. The task force would be used for urban search and rescue. Definitely going to be a long night for the folks in Florida. Let's take a first look at your forecast with First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Matt Perez. Matt. Well, thank you very much. Obviously, uh, this is the big story of the night. Uh, already in Fort Myers, right about here, the storm is actually passed, but the surge is coming in and they've got quite a bit of lowland flooding there. But of course, the major concern is from Tampa Bay to the north of Panama City. That's where the 20 foot surge is forecast to come in. You can see it. It's happening right now. And as a matter of fact, within the next two hours, it'll be probably touching main, the mainland and uh, that's when everything is going to go south on, on Florida. We'll be talking more about them and we're going to try and get some live pictures for you coming up in just a few minutes. Toss it back to you, Don. Mac, thank you. A bird flu outbreak in dairy cattle started earlier this year in Texas. Now it's affecting California's dairy production. These cows work hard for us. You got to keep them healthy, happy, and everything they want. Larry Haworth is a third generation owner of Dutra Farms. His grandfather started the Manteca farm 80 years ago. So when Haworth found out about the bird flu spreading through Central Valley herds. As every uh, other operator in the industry is, we're, we are worried about it. The California Department of Food and Agriculture says 34 herds throughout the Central Valley have been infected with the bird flu, otherwise known as H5N1. It isn't necessarily fatal to dairy cows, but does decrease their milk production. We asked the CDFA if they could tell us exactly what farms or what counties have detected the bird flu. They would not say and responded with, quote, practicing enhanced biosecurity reduces disease spread, thereby protecting both animal and public health, they say. In some areas, disclosing the county would effectively disclose the location of an affected dairy, end quote. Would be nice to know proximity. Um, as far as knowing who it is, uh, probably not. We took a look inside Dutra Farms operations and what he does to keep them safe. During the milking process, he says the cows are cleaned and their coats sprayed with a sanitizer to kill any kind of virus that may be there. Even after they're milked, Haworth says the cow's udders are dipped in a sanitizing and moisturizing solution to keep them from having any problems. But if his farm is infected, Haworth is keeping a positive attitude. And it is treatable and curable. Senate Democrats are boosting Colin Allred's bid against Senator Ted Cruz with a multi-million dollar investment. The Texas Tribune reports the investment means the Democrats are taking Texas seriously. Texas Senate race is also likely to be one of the most expensive in the state's history. Ted Cruz predicted up to $150 million will be spent on the race. An empty field in Victoria will soon be filled with American flags, with each one of those flags honoring a military hero, past or present. In what has become a crossroads tradition, the Field of Honor flags will once again be waving, again, to honor veterans past and present. Field of Honor organizer Colonel Mike Petrosh says more than 2,000 rebar rods have been placed in the ground, ready for the flag posting ceremony on Saturday morning. Colonel Petrosh says 
sponsoring a flag is a great way to show honor and respect to those who help keep our country free. It's not about saying, hey, look at us. It's about the fact that we are able to honor as many veterans and warriors as we can out here. The Field of Honor flag posting is this Saturday, the 29th at the Field of Honor that's located next to Parkway Church on John Stockbauer. The flag posting begins at 9 a.m. The Warriors Weekend Fishing Rodeo will take place October 12th with the soldiers arriving the day before. If you're interested in sponsoring a flag, you can go to warriorsweekend.org. And here's today's viewer poll. Have you visited the Field of Honor? Yes, I have. No, but I'm going on Saturday for the posting. No, I have not. We want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to participate. And um, just over half of you say that you have not uh, visited the Field of Honor. 7% um, say that you're, you're planning to go Saturday to the, the flag posting. So continue to vote. We want to hear from you. And we'll have the latest results on 25 News Now at 10. Well, Brady Road in northern Victoria County will be closing temporarily. The area of Brady Road off FM 444 will close on Monday between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. so that crews can repair a cross pipe. Well, we have the full Victoria ISD press conference from Tuesday on our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. You can hit the like button and click the notification bell there so that you get alerts when we upload new videos. So stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 6, Hurricane Helene now upgraded to a major Category 4 storm threatening Florida. We'll have the latest. Also ahead, the U.S. government offers more free at-home COVID-19 test kits. The U.S. government is making more at-home COVID-19 tests available for free. Each household will be able to order a new round of four free at-home test kits. The new test kits will be available by the end of the month. The U.S. Department of Human Health reports more than 900 million test kits have been delivered through the program. Here are some of the top headlines that you'll read in the Victoria Advocate. New details emerge in a local school terroristic threat involving a 17 year old student. You can read about family fiesta day at Victoria College and the Lavaca Navidad River Authority continues to push for a reservoir project. You can read these stories and more by going to victoriaadvocate.com or picking up a copy at a local store near you. Helene is now a major category four hurricane with winds as high reportedly as 129 miles an hour. It's one of the largest storms to come out of the Gulf of Mexico in the last century. Helene will soon make a projected landfall near Florida's panhandle as state officials change their messaging from evacuate to shelter in place. Every minute that goes by brings uh, us closer 
to having conditions that are going to be simply too dangerous to navigate. The National Weather Service is using another term, unsurvivable. When it comes to the storm surge, Helene is expected to unleash on parts of the Florida coast in the coming hours. If it's 20 feet like they're saying, it's going to change the landscape in Franklin County, I can assure you that. Franklin and Taylor counties are in Helene's expected landfall zone, but for much of Florida's Gulf Coast, mandatory evacuations have been in place since Wednesday, with state and local officials imploring residents, leave while you can. Some people have made decisions that, uh, that they're going to hunker down, uh, even though they were, uh, they were requested to leave. Regardless of that, the governor says rescue crews are standing by. If there's people that are going to be in distress, uh, we're going to be there to be able to assist in those efforts. Their message now, survival. If you hear trees snapping around your home, treat it like a tornado. Get to an interior portion of your home, get as low as you can. And silence, officials warn, doesn't mean safe. What that actually means is you're in the eye of the hurricane. All right, do not go out and survey damage. An eye that could be up to 50 miles wide with more catastrophic conditions less than an hour behind it. Helene is expected to roar up the southeastern U.S. with impacts felt as far north as D.C. in the days ahead. Right now, along with Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, and Virginia are under a state of emergency. In Steenhatchee, Florida, I'm Michael Yoshida reporting. Well, good afternoon, everyone. For us, it's amazing how lovely our weather is going to be. Gorgeous afternoon sun. Uh, today, we're uh, right now we're at 89 degrees, and our high only got up to 90. Okay, but with low humidity, that was fairly pleasant. I think you'll agree. We'll be around 89, uh, 90 for the next couple of days. Our weather is perfect when you consider what's going on on the East Coast. We'll have all that coming up in a moment. Well, we're taking a look at our uh, satellite radar picture. Nothing over Texas. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, lots of sunshine, low humidities, the northerly wind. Other side of the uh, country, uh, this is, uh, of course, Florida. You can see the southernmost point there at Key West. And these people are dumb. There's no other way to say that. Uh, they could be a rogue wave coming up at any time, and they really shouldn't be out there. But curiosity killed the cat. And uh, who knows what will happen here. Now, this storm is going to be a major problem tonight uh, because the frontal system is maintaining it to the east, okay? Here's high pressure. That's what we've got. We've got that northerly wind. The front is already right at the Florida panhandle. They're sort of fighting with each other. And the storm now moves ashore within the next two hours. Now, tomorrow, we're going to be very nice, 92 uh, 89 out in West Texas, uh, low humidity again, lovely. But this, of course, is the big story. There's the center of the storm. Now, Fort Myers has already gotten uh, the storm surge coming in, uh, you know, waters coming into the city. Uh, then the storm is out here and then it runs ashore. Now, it's at 125 miles an hour right about now. And this is going to be the interesting part. The storm makes landfall here. It goes right over Tallahassee that goes into Macon, Georgia, 
and even Atlanta is probably going to get winds in excess of 80 to 100 miles an hour as the storm rolls quickly through that area. Not to mention the wind, the trees, the power lines, the rain, all of that is going to be occurring. So obviously it's a big concern. Now here's something that's interesting for you and me. Seven days from now, we're looking here October the 2nd through the 5th, the computer models are putting another hurricane in the same spot. Okay? Now, will it go this way or will it go this way? At this point in time, it's too early to tell because we need to know where the high pressures are located. However, all I'm saying to you is that there's a very good chance we'll see another one spin up here right behind the same path that Helene is taking. Talk about getting weird on you. Uh, for the next uh, few hours, the storm surge uh, in the coast of Florida right here is expected to be 15 to 20 feet. They don't have Padre Island or Mustang Island or St. Joe Islands to slow it down. That's just a direct hit on shore. So this is likely to be a very good number in terms of the storm surge. And then here's what happens. The water goes in and then the water goes out. So it's going to be hard to resist all of that pressure and force. For us, I couldn't get, I couldn't uh, find anything. I mean, it's just beautiful. Northerly winds continue, 90 tomorrow. A little warm in the afternoon hours, but with the humidity being so low, it's uh, kind of a rare kind of situation for us. And look at this, seven days of sunshine all the way through early next week with temperatures maybe getting a little hot in the daytime, but evenings will be very pleasant, uh, very nice. That's your seven day forecast reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that, put Crossroads today on your phone. And here's Shauna. Mac, that's what I call the uh, copy and paste forecast. Yes. <laughs> Lots of sunshine. <laughs> All right. Well, now we go over to Max Williams, who has a look at what's coming up in sports. Yeah, at least it'll be nice weather, right, Shauna and Don? Again, for football here coming up tomorrow night. But for today, it is Athlete of the Week. I'm going to tell you who that is coming up in sports. All right, everyone, so today is Thursday, and that means Athlete of the Week. In the past couple of weeks, we've gave it to star quarterback Dominic Martinez from Toria West. We also gave it to Braylon Harris, wide receiver from Edna. So who will it be this week? Drum roll, everybody. It is Ganado star quarterback Bryce Ullman. Here's sports reporter Ray Robinson with more of our Athlete of the Week. The Ganado Indians were at full strength on Friday night against the Tidehaven Tigers. Their 42-6 victory could be a display of what's to come in the future, which brings me to your Athlete of the Week. Bryce Ullman, who made his long-awaited season debut for the 2024-2025 high school football year. It feels good. Uh, I've never been better. Um, energies, uh, more ecstatic than I've ever seen. Uh, just me getting back on the field with them. And uh, it's fun to be playing with them uh, back here again. Bryce didn't appear to miss a step in his first game back, throwing for 402 yards and five touchdowns, a performance where he was quick to give his props to. This game was also a message because he knows there's still more work to be done. Props to my receivers, props to the O-line, props to everybody. I mean, 
they they all did well and uh and it showed. Um, I'm satisfied, but uh, job's not finished. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some missed assignments, uh, like making the bad, uh, wrong reads and stuff. That's on my part, but uh, we got to fix some stuff up in the defensively and offensively. And hey, when we get those things fixed, we'll be clicking real well. The Indians are currently ranked number two in Class 2A Division One and look to continue to prove their case as a state favorite, taking on Flatonia in their first district game of the season. Let's wish the Indians good luck. Ray Robinson, KAVU, TV 25 News Now, Sports. All right, thanks, Ray. And speaking of high school, I mentioned last night that the city of Bloomington, the Bobcats, they're going to play the Danbury Panthers here tonight instead of Friday night. This change happened due to a lack of referees that was scheduled to be for tomorrow's game, and it's here for tonight. So, with this being said, we have one of our reporters in Zach Brown, who is live in Bloomington to give us an update for the game. Zach, what's going on? Yeah, so district play opens up for Bloomington, and it came a little bit early on a Thursday. Now, I'll get to that in just a second. The boys looking for their first home district win since the 2013 season. They snapped their district winless streak last season, but it was on the road in Kennedy. Kickoff for this ball game is going to be at 7.30. PM. Now, the reason for this game being on a Thursday evening is due to a official shortage in the state of Texas. So they bumped this ball game up. Now, tonight's ball game is going to be against Danbury. It's a very winnable game for a Bloomington Bobcat team that's hoping to make a lot more noise in district play this year and really build off of some building blocks at the start of last season before things kind of fell apart. But it's a brand new season, a fresh start new head coach and a whole lot of more brand new pieces in place for the green and white. We'll have highlights and a final score tonight at 10. Reporting live from Bloomington, Zach Brown, KV TV 25 News Now Sports. All right, Zach, and hopefully we can see a Bloomington get a big time win tonight over Danbury. And in the show, UHV men's soccer, they played LSU Shreveport in conference play earlier today. This game went back and forth, but again, for Shreveport, they took the early lead. Again, number 10, Jack Thomas scores a goal for LSU Shreveport there, and he was originally from Whittington, England. He transferred from Northeast Texas Community College, and now for UHV, that's their first loss of the season. Again, we talked about some of the star players, Bailey O'Reilly, star freshman Dario Elson, but no goals to show for for the men's team in action. They'll play against Texas A&M Texarkanda this Saturday. It's for a youth soccer appreciation weekend. And also, the women's soccer team will be playing as well. They lost today 3 to nothing against LSU Shreveport as well. That's going to do it here in sports. Don and Shauna, back to you. All right, thank you, Max, and we're back in a moment. A lifeguard chair washes up on a Delaware beach after traveling a surprising distance. Finally tonight, what some people found this week on a Delaware beach was a red lifeguard chair washed up on shore. Local police say they've spoken with authorities in New Jersey. Rip currents brought the chair from that state to Delaware. That's a total of 118 miles 
Fenwick <laughs> Island authorities in Delaware say New Jersey does not want the lifeguard chair back. <laughs> so Fenwick is trying to figure out what to do with it. One option is putting it up for auction in the future. That's a long way yeah. for a chair mm -hmm. to go there. Clean it That's off a big and chair stick it too. on the beach. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, land on the beach, perfect spot. And I've got this feeling that yeah. some lifeguard chairs oh, are going to be blown that. away in Florida. <laughs> I, 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 I was kidding, and I, mean, I shouldn't kid, but if, if people are going to be moving zip codes down there in Florida oh, yeah. because yeah. of the yeah. amount of uh, storm surge that is expected wow. tonight. Wow. Now, this is uh, about two, three hours away. Wow. Uh, the storm center will make landfall. This is, of course, uh, what it looks like down there and folks either should be hunkering down or have left the area because the storm surge is forecast to be up 15 to 20 feet that's ocean water on the land wow. yeah. and that's going to be a big problem so that we is. will watch uh, all night long to see what happens in florida yeah hopefully uh, those people you, are getting out of there pretty soon yeah we are our, our forecast like you said <laughs> what, what do you call this a cut and paste <laughs> forecast sunny 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 well i tell you what if it's like that cut and paste all you want. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes All right. Sure. Thank you, Mac. And thanks for joining us. Be sure to join us back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.